Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On today's video, we're doing things a little bit different and we're going to be talking about the very currently hot topic, all about food shortages. So if you guys did not realize, there is a ton of articles done by mainstream media right now saying that there is an impending food shortage. So we're going to break down these articles. We're going to look at them and we're going to apply both what I know about the agricultural industry and what exactly they're talking about and if it's a real threat or if it's something we can just pretend is mainstream media being mainstream media, honestly, I think everyone can agree with it that at this point so now the common theme is they blame it on three different things the first one being covid the pandemic the second being a labor shortage and the third being climate change so we're going to look at each one of those individually to come up with a decision as to whether or not this is a very real issue or if it's it's just craziness. So when we look at COVID-19 and what it's done to food in general, there there's two sides to this coin. First off, people hoarded food initially in the pandemic because we were told to stock up with two weeks of food supply. So obviously that pulled a lot of food out of circulation. And therefore, in many cases, we saw it, the, the shelves were empty, despite the fact that there wasn't an actual food shortage yet. And I can see that happening again with all the news articles coming out saying that there is a food shortage coming up. Honestly, I can see it happening where people are going to rush out to the grocery store and they're going to get all the canned, all the dry goods that they possibly can. And then yes, the shelves are going to look incredibly empty if they continue reporting on it in this fashion with these very flashy titles that get everyone incredibly worked up. So that is kind of the first thing. Um, the other issue with COVID-19 is that for a lot of farmers and producers, I personally know we weren't able to get in the workers that we typically would get from other countries, for example, or just even locally to come out and work at the farms because the borders were closed. And because of that, um, a lot of summer fallow happened during the growing season, meaning the bins were less full, less fields were planted, and therefore less food was produced. And what this ultimately triggered was less food in the supply chain. Now you can compound this with the reopening of China prior to the reopening of the rest of the world. So during the early spring this year and winter, uh, many farmers would know this if you do farm canola prices absolutely skyrocketed and everyone was wondering well, why would these canola prices skyrocket so high like prices we've never seen in years and it is because china reopened and when china reopened they needed canola oil because it is a huge staple in their diet along with other uh, grains and um, oil seeds for example so the the price of canola absolutely skyrocketed because there was a very high demand coming from a very heavily populated area and because of that um, in general China and their population ended up pulling a lot of the food out of the storage systems throughout North America Europe into their system because farmers are it's a business they're here to sell so because the food system isn't nationalized it is internationalized so we feed people all around the world we just need the orders from other countries and then we send the food there we ended up sending quite a bit of our food supply um, overseas to other areas so that is another reason why COVID-19 could be you know tagged as a reason for the future potential food shortages now, the labor shortage being a part of the food shortage discussion is a very important, especially in um, North America, in the U.S. So in the U.S., there is my understanding is that there's almost an incentive not to work in some states. And because of that, there's less workers and there's less minimum or low paying job type workers, which food production, if you guys did not know, is an absolute slog 
It is a slog. So your average human that works in food production, honestly, should be considered an essential service worker because the work they do for so little recognition is ridiculous. So whether that be from the meat side or the grain side or the vegetable side, we are talking hard, hard labor with very little pay. And because of that, a lot of workers are getting subsidized by the government. So there's no real reason to go back to these jobs where you were sunburnt, um, heat stroked, you know, needing water like crazy, working your butt off for very little pay. So that is a very valid reason. And then truck driving, actually, a lot of truck drivers have quit um, because COVID, you know, did some pretty crazy things to them where they were locked out of washrooms and showers and just real mean mean things you do not generally do to essential workers our government did do to them so you know many of them quit or many of them gave up on that as a career path so we are lacking the truck drivers we are lacking the farmers we are lacking the producers and the people that are in the trenches when it comes to food production so the foods the supply chain again is you know hampered or dampened by that fact as well and so that means there's less food in the system because farmers won't plant especially if it's really intensive type farming um, such as a large-scale vegetable farm for example if you don't have the workers to pick the vegetables if you don't have the workers to weed or to plant or to maintain water whatever the case and manage the irrigation systems um, you just you can't produce food so you probably wouldn't plant that field so you're probably going to see a lot of empty fields this year for that reason as well um just the supply getting access to the seeds or the fertilizer or you know the pesticides whatever the case is that's a, another factor on there in canada um, a factor is the carbon tax so uh, farmers in canada will leverage uh cost you know the it's a business so they're going to look at the cost of operating based on the new taxes that are incurred for running machinery for example or grain dryers and from there they will determine what to do with that field so seed it or not seed it if they do seed it and they go to bring it into the bins and it is you know has a really high moisture content which if you guys did not know you cannot just put wet grain into a bin it's it will rot it will ferment so we don't want to do that so we will dry our grain the problem is is that now there's a carbon tax on drying grain and the carbon tax while some of it's a write-off not all of it's a write-off and therefore it doesn't counteract the cost to dry the grain so a lot of food uh, wheat rye barley canola that sort of thing that would generally be fed to human beings is actually being fed to animals as animal feed because we don't want to pay the price of drying that grain. So what would normally be allocated to human consumption is now animal consumption because we don't have the time or the money to spend on drying it. So that is another factor and that factor was seen a little bit last year, but definitely the year before. So going into COVID, that was definitely something that was very prominent across Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, anywhere that is grain-based farming. So there's those factors as well. And then the last factor being uh, climate change. So I'm not going to get into climate change too, too much because it's quite honestly at this point very political. It's not based in science. Really, there's no uh, discussions allowed for or against climate change. I just find it really irritating. But from a soil science perspective, when we look at climate change or whatever's happening outside with our environment, there is some pretty major uh, changes happening to our agricultural land. And if you guys have watched um, any of the soil videos that have come out lately, lately uh, in regards to our topsoil being blown away and how we won't have topsoil to feed the world and how we won't be able to feed the world because our irritable land or our farmland is being destroyed, you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, from a soil science perspective, to be totally honest, I could do a whole video on Kiss the, the Ground, uh, 
and just a narration of that documentary and kind of where they're theatrical and where they're based in some truth. But overall, the issue with farmland right now and the climate is that we put farms in places we should not have put farms. And that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, the, if you watch my video on the 1930s, so my, um, you know, my creepy crawly Fridays that I do every once in a while where I talk about odd plants or odd soil features, you know, just kind of spooky stuff um, about the plant world. I did a video on the dirty 30s and in that we talked about the placement of that farmland and how they placed the farmland in a relatively arid prairie environment and because of that in combination with a drought season these the tops all blew away and the earth was moved because we put farmland in an area that farmland should not be and so a lot of the footage out of these really fear-mongering soil videos is footage taken from areas where a farm should not be so it's not so much that the topsoil is blowing away because of climate change or because of improper uh soil management which i mean yes that does you know play a role but by large um a huge majority of canada for example over 50 percent i would say cl probably closer to 60 percent 75 in some provinces is already no-till so there is no till even in a conventional or an organic system there's just there's no such thing actually there's probably more till in organic systems to be honest and i can get into why that is but when we look at uh, where these farms are placed they're placed in areas where that soil was never meant to be broken and it was never meant to support a plant that needed a ton of water or a ton of nutrients it was meant to support you know arid grasses or it was meant to support you know fescue for example and so because we've placed farmland on land that was never meant to grow you know canola wheat corn soya beans like these really heavy feeders water wise and nutrient wise we're ending up with a lot of wasted land and what will happen over time is we were reliant on that farmland to provide us food and because we were reliant on that land to support us food, we built a population off of that land supporting our society and the population that we currently have. If we chose to leave that land alone and didn't decide to farm it, uh, we would have a food supply chain issue long, long before now. And so we would have hopefully self-regulated, which I doubt we would have, but we would have ran into this issue long time ago which would then curb our population and how many children we have based on food scarcity and that sort of thing. So what we're seeing is as the climate changes and it gets warmer or it gets cooler or we get more rain or we get less rain, whatever the case is, as that climate changes, if the climate changes in that area to uh, what used to be maybe higher moisture and something into closer reflecting a drought or something that used to be milder temperature and now is maybe very hot even if it's just for a short period of time because if you guys didn't know there's huge fluctuations in weather you can have many climate changes just naturally occurring over historic historical periods of time so if we end up with a mini climate change for even three four five years we will take out a huge portion of our food supply our soil because we don't have the water to uh, sustain a crop on land that was never meant or built to hold that much water in the system itself and i can honestly see this happening because uh, it is very dry out in canada for example and i'm sure portions of the u.s may be dry other areas are much more wet so that's not so much of an issue but these areas where we decided to cultivate and put farmland in place that were never meant to sustain water or hold water for larger sized crops we're, we're gonna have a food shortage in that respect 
So overall, do I suspect a food shortage is coming? Yes, I do. I think it is well on its way to happening. I do think the grocery store shelves will be empty for a period of time. And it's a combination of things. It's a combination of farmers not planting as much crop because they either don't have the workforce for it or they don't have, you know, they're being taxed, for example, with a carbon tax. Ultimately, whether or not you agree with the carbon tax, it's fine it's just it's a business and so they're going to alter their business based on the cost so if the cost of the carbon tax is too high then they may choose not to farm a piece of land or they may choose to not dry a piece of grain and rather feed it as animal feed because at the end of the day the profit whether it be for human consumption or for animal consumption would be very similar and which typically historically is not the case animal consumption animal quality feed is much lower and therefore catches a much lower price whereas human quality food is much more expensive and therefore has higher profit margins and you know catches a higher price but if if they're level profit wise the farmers are just not going to put that much effort into the actual drying of it so there's that side of it um then we have the labor shortage side whether that be the factories that package the food and process the food the truck drivers or the manual labor on these farms we have a lack of that then the the media going out saying that the world's ending and there's a massive food shortage coming it's going to cause people to rush out and buy canned goods and dried goods like no tomorrow so the shelves will be empty because of that as well just from fear and then lastly the idea of the climate change causing food shortages i wouldn't again i wouldn't blame it on climate change i would blame it more so on us having very beneficial years for probably the last hundred years where we had a climate that for whatever reason was relatively stable in all intents and purposes and so we put farmland in areas we should have never have put farmland we put farmland back in the areas that were part of the dust bowl to put that into perspective we put farmland in the areas that we noted as soil scientists as areas that should not be cultivated regardless of no till regardless of anything because the annual precipitation rate was much too low to support human food it was it was meant for fescue it was not meant for corn so we have that as well i don't know you guys have to let me know in the comments down below what you think about the food shortage obviously the solution to this personally my belief is going back to localized gardening localized farming canning drying that sort of thing before not even 50 years ago honestly uh, probably less than or well probably like 50 to 100 years ago ish in and around that time frame you could talk to your grandparents but they didn't go to grocery stores they didn't grocery stores are a very new phenomenon uh, a non-localized food supply very new phenomenon and so even in a pandemic if we would have had a localized food supply we would have weathered this storm much much better because we would have had canned dried goods we would have had local gardens um, whether that be a front yard backyard home mini micro homestead type style or if it was the parks the the mount when i drive by a park and i don't see a single fruit tree or a raspberry bush in it i literally want to rip my hair out it like the city planners for the last hundred years absolutely dropped the ball in that respect so um a localized food supply community gardens it doesn't even have to be something where one person starts up a business and does a community garden where people then go you know a you pick farm where you then buy produce that's super bougie and expensive like that's not even necessary so a more localized food uh, supply would be beneficial people learning how to can dry that sort of thing and ultimately i'm hoping well i actually think i personally think this that covid the pandemic and now this food shortage is seriously going to change how people interact with their food and it may actually turn into a more localized food supply 
type scenario. So just something to think about. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments down below what you think the solution to the food shortage is. And please, for the love of everything holy, do not go out and just buy all the shelves of food because you're gonna make this situation so much worse. Please restrain yourself. There's not an actual food shortage. It's just the packages of food aren't just, they're not getting on the shelf. That's all that's happening. Trust me, there's no actual food shortage. You can ask your local grocery store how much produce they threw away before COVID. It's a lot. It's a lot. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.